So welcome. I'm so happy to see so many of you. Um, this is the first uh, um, instance of unsound, sources of unsoundness in verification. Uh, I tried to make this presentation a little bit uh, colorful, so all the images made with me journey. Here I just asked for horrible music in the tone of unsound. Uh, so, I think there is a lot of confusion in uh, software verification, and you can say that in the last like 15 years, this has grown from a purely like academic uh, endeavor to something so much uh, with so much more traction that is starting to also attract like industry attention. Um, but this has come to a cost. I mean, if our system has become much more complex and our uh, attempts to make those systems usable, you know, in the real world, in real programs, uh, have uh, added a lot of complexity and a bunch of things sort of hard coded in like special cases. And proving that those kind of revision tools are sound is harder and harder, especially because you have to move fast in order to keep your tool relevant. So a single research group has start to have trouble to actually keep you know, their tool sound and prove them sound while they keep improving them. Having formally defining soundness, what exactly it means in your specific verification context could be an obvious. And it can be that different groups can end up uh, having different definitions for what is sound. And while that is, in some sense, you know, all fine from a you know academic uh, intent, you know, you pose your goals and then you get them. Think about a user that has not the capacity or you know the like economical motivation to get uh, to the root of it and discover exactly what you mean by sound, exactly the way in which the tool can be abused in or provide counterintuitive results at least. Uh, yeah, I think this is problematic and it's going to grow in a bigger and bigger problem in the future. Um, so different research group can have this very specific kind of sound that they focus on and it can be very different from what the user expect. Here I just search for, I just me journey for a confused woman that doesn't know where to go, which direction to take, how to navigate a set of difficult options. So I compel you, is that English? I compel you to join us. Um, I think this will be a great experience for all of us involved. Uh, my hope is that we can share experience and exploits of those tools and try to discuss you know, with each other how can we break those tools or if the tool is not really broken, how can we get to the point where we expose some very confusing behavior. You know, one of the big problems in verification is sometimes you make a mistake in what you are trying to prove and so, yes, you proved it, but it's not really what you wanted to prove, and it's very hard to notice that. And so I hope that by having like a inter-research group community to try to break those tools and understand the limitation, we can get, you know, an understanding of those foundational difference between the assumption of those different research groups. So yes, what I am proposing is basically to create a venue where we can publish negative results in uh, the area of uh, verification, where it would be reasonably easy to get you know, publication in where you show that this tool is broken in this way, or 
we think that it's very, very confusing for a user to use a tool that do this. I mean, it's not technically unsound with respect to their definition of unsound. Uh, and hopefully, this uh, corpus of publication that maybe we can create in the next few years will be a good starting point for people that try to get a global <coughs> understanding of the verification and this limitation. And in practice, what I think is happening is that uh, people tend to focus on one problem at a time. You know, as humans, that's what we do. So when, for example, we really want to focus on aliasing control in object orientation, maybe we become, you know, intellectually more sloppy, like unavoidably, on other kind of thing. For example, termination checking. It looks like it's a completely, you know, cross-cutting concern with respect to what we are doing. And so maybe we do some error there, but then you know our work sort of become popular and people assume that was found because there was a proof that sure we had some holes, some hidden assumptions, but you know, and uh, so the parts where you were not focusing is probably where you may have done some issue. So I really think this is going to be important for like the new generations. Yeah, it's a, I asked my journey to give me an image of baby Hercules surrounded by snakes. Because like one of the first uh, thing he did was like to get rid of snakes that was attacking his, uh, we can say some um, English. So uh, I really think that this kind of environment could be very good for new common researchers in verifications. That otherwise come the risk of just uh, you know getting inserted in a specific research group and just get the biases of and the assumption of this research group without uh, getting to have a overall look of what verification is and how different systems are limited in different way and why. Uh, And in particular, I'm very worried that during this you know, fast expansion with this attempt to satisfy the industry need, we ended up glossing over some fundamental issue in verification that uh, now have become engraved into this established wisdom and sometimes or often is just assumed as established knowledge and then people just build on top of it without realizing that they are building on a broken foundation. So uh, welcome, everyone. Yeah, I think I asked for like uh, the most welcoming image or something like that. And this is what Mid Journey gave me. Uh, we are particularly interested in sources of unsoundness that accidentally that are accidentally shared by many different tools, because this seems to point to something that is not just a bug in a specific tool, but it is a general problem of a you know wall line of reasoning. Those kind of assumptions that again they are wrong, but we assume they're right and we share them, and then different tools implement those assumptions and they are all broken in the same way then. Uh, we really want to be welcoming to both people with strong technical skill and foundational of logic and verification, but also just people that like hacking things, you know, that like to break it as a software engineering project. How can I experience the corner cases? So can we do model checking on top of verification tools? Can we do FADS testing on top of verification tools? You know, can we try to break them? using software engineering techniques. That is also exceptionally valuable, I think, at this stage. So this is our schedule. I had to set up the clock on my PC forward in order to get the now there yesterday evening. And um, so now we have the welcome to sound. In a uh, few seconds, we are going to have, what do we mean by unsound from Jan Besai? Um, then we're going to have our coffee break. Then we have two invited talk, how to trust the verified program and MetaCock as a tool to prevent future unsoundness in COC. 
then we, there's the lunch, and then we have two, uh, three in-person event. So we have an accepted paper, proving false in object-oriented verification programs by exploiting non-termination. We have the four horsemen of unsoundness of languages that I will give. And then we will have a group discussion looking about the future for this workshop and see what we can do next year or maybe in two year time. Okay, so it's my pleasure to leave the spot to our first remote invite speaker, Jan